Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. So today, we've got a real treat for you. In front of us here, we've got a Dell Dimension 2400, complete with matching flat screen, keyboard, mouse, and really fancy $2 computer store speakers <laughs> from back in the 90s. So there you have it. Don't get jealous, you can't have them, they're mine. But in any event, here's the machine. We've got this perfectly set up on my son's desk who just started school for the year. So I thought, why not take his desk and put a nice PC on it for him? <laughs> anyway, here it is. So in any event, as we go today and go about installing Windows 98 on this PC, you may say, what's the big deal? It's an old PC, it should work. Well, as it ends up, this PC was designed for Windows XP. And I bet you can barely see the logo, but there it is. That makes installing 98 a bit of a hassle, but it can be done, and that's what we're here to do today. All right, so let's get started. So to get things going, I've got a partition set up on the disk, and we're gonna use a Windows 98 uh, boot disk that I made. I think I got this off of bootdisks.com or something like that and burned it to an ISO. Basically has Windows 98 startup and CD-ROM drivers. So let's go ahead and pop that into the drive. And I've already laid down on the disk a 15 gigabyte partition. So we should be all set there. That should be plenty of space for Windows 98. All right, so rebooted the PC here. You can see uh, starting to load things up here. All right, we're gonna start with CD-ROM support. It's gonna go ahead and load a driver there and it's also gonna try to load a couple of SCSI drivers if I recall. It's trying to be as complete as possible. All right, so now we're started up and drive E is our CD drive. So with that, we're gonna take the boot disk out. We'll just set that on top and we're gonna pop into the drive a copy of Windows 98 SE, which I burned from my Academic Alliance license from back in the day. Once you, once you have a license to the software, it's yours to keep. So here we are in the year 2020 with my Academic Alliance version. We'll go ahead and pop that into the drive. So what we're actually going to go ahead and do now is copy the contents of the setup directory from the Windows 98 CD directly to drive C. I think that that'll make things a little bit easier later when it comes to um, needing to install drivers from that CD. So we'll go ahead and change the drive E into the setup directory and just do a copy star dot star to C colon backslash win 98 where you can see I just made that directory. And for whatever reason, it looks like it flipped us back to the root of the disk. Let's try that again. All right, with that copy complete, we are ready to start the setup program. But first, let's take the CD out of the drive, never to be seen again. All right, so I'm gonna go to drive C here, and we're at the Windows 98 folder. Traditionally, when you'd set up a Microsoft operating system, you would just type setup. However, in this case, we need to pass in one very special flag, slash P, with the option of I, and that is a P. The reason we have to do this is this disables ACPI power management uh, within Windows 98 uh, to prevent issues with power management in using this particular quote-unquote newer PC. So with that, let's press enter. All right, so a media check is going to be performed. All right, looks like our disk checks out, good thing. Okay, so we will accept the license agreement and proceed to the license key screen, which I will be skipping, but trust me that it's there. All right, I've entered my license key and hit the next button. We are now going to install to C colon backslash windows. We'll do a typical setup. Go ahead and put our name in here. 
and we'll install the most common components. Location will be United States and we'll click next for startup disk, but then we'll click cancel and it'll proceed on and not bother us to create one. All right, time to start copying files. And this will be a long drawn out process after which the files are copied. We will have a restart and we will go from there. All right, with the files copied, let's go ahead and restart. All right, with the restart complete, we are now initializing drivers and we'll be searching for hardware installed in the system. All right, with non plug and play hardware detection complete, it's time to detect plug and play devices. And we get to provide a computer and workgroup name at this point. We're just going to say Dell 2400 and we'll put it in the workgroup. OK. Now we get to choose our time zone. We can ignore the clock. We're just a little bit off. It's truly not four in the morning, I promise. Control panel is going to set up here as well as programs on the start menu. Always reads the floppy drive every time. And the system settings here will update and we'll be ready for a reboot. All right, now we're ready for another reboot. All right, so at this point, we'll just go ahead and press enter to accept the default password. It's found my nice plug and play uh, monitor there. We'll tell it to search for the best driver next. We don't need to specify floppy drive. It's going to find it and then we can click next. And finish. So with that, our initial boot is complete. We get our nice welcome screen here, but boy, does it look terrible. We have some work to do here, folks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off so we don't see this every time. But the next thing that we need to do is install a series of drivers. And for that, I have a very special CD that I've created. I will put lots of links down in the description with all the drivers that I pulled into play uh, to get this set up. But let's go ahead and start installing some drivers. And as you might imagine, there are some gotchas here. I'll walk you through them. All right, so we'll cruise on over to the driver's CD. And we're going to install a chipset. Going to skip the USB drivers. I'll talk briefly about that. There's this uh, utility called NUSB36E, which basically gives you mass storage. I don't need that for what we're doing here. You're certainly welcome to install it if you'd like it, but we're going to skip that. But we can go ahead and start with chipset and then network, video, and then sound in that order. And then we'll be all set. So we'll go into the chipset drivers here and go ahead and install this. These are Intel drivers. We have an Intel chipset on this PC and we're using driver version 6.2.1.1001. It's not too old. It's not too new. It's just right for what we're trying to accomplish for this Dell Dimension 2400. Go ahead and click through these options here. Accept the license agreement. Next here. And away it goes. And we definitely want to go ahead and restart. This will be the first of many restarts as the drivers detect the hardware. All right, so on restart here, a driver information database is getting built with all of those new Intel drivers we just installed. And we'll see this go through, detecting a variety of devices, followed by a reboot, followed by more detection, followed by another reboot. And I think from there, followed by more detection and a third reboot. And from there, after four total reboots, we should have our chipset drivers installed. All right, there's our second reboot. And more items being detected. All right, let's reboot again. 
All right, so with that, I think we're all set. I thought there was one more reboot in there. Sorry to disappoint you that I think that's it. So next up in the list, we're gonna go ahead and install the network drivers. So here we go. So we're gonna double click on the network driver uh, directory there and then on the installer. And this is for the Broadcom 4401 network card. And it's going to extract the drivers here. This is going to be important, so we want to pay attention to that. Go ahead and create the folder. It's then going to launch the installation program. The installation program is going to fail and say, wait a minute, this isn't Windows 2000 or XP. There it is. As such, we get to install these by hand. So what we can do at this point is we're going to come over here to my computer and go to properties, go to device manager, and find our PCI Ethernet controller and double click on it. Reinstall driver. Next, search for a better driver, specify a location, and we can then browse to drive C. And remember how we said to remember that location, Dell drivers R6465, R64645, pardon me. And we're going to go to the Windows 2K folder and click OK, and then Next. And lo and behold, the driver is found. Next. All right, it's going to ask us for that location again, so we can just point it up here. OK. All right, all installed. Perfect. So we'll finish, and it's time to restart again. Okay, finished rebooting again. We have our chipset done, we have our network done. Let's do video. So for video, we actually have a Windows 98 driver. And this is for the, I wanna say the 845 chipset, don't quote me on that. But that's going to be, uh, all of the chipsets here are supported by this, so let's go ahead and click Install, or Next. But one thing you will notice is this is Intel Extreme Graphics. And not only is this Intel Extreme Graphics, this is Intel Extreme Graphics 2. So you know that we're fancy here. All right, let's proceed. All right, we'll agree to the license agreement. Off it goes. All right, of course we want to restart. Hey, look at that. The background's a little more blue than it was before, so we're definitely at a higher color resolution. Okay, now for some fun. We're gonna click OK here, and we're gonna click Skip, because this file is nowhere to be found. I promise that things are gonna work anyway. Just trust me. So once again, okay, skip, and we'll be just fine, I promise. Okay, so that's video. That just leaves us with sound. So we're gonna go ahead and run this to extract it. Click okay, create the folder, pay close attention to where this is going again, R72429. Okay, you're going to get this nice pop-up with a web page. Don't trust it. It doesn't work. It says click this button. Don't. Nothing will happen good. Nothing bad will happen either. But what we're going to do at this point is right-click on my computer, go to Properties, Device Manager, PCI Multimedia Audio Device, Reinstall Driver, Next, Search for a Better Driver, and we're going to point it to C colon backslash Dell drivers R72429 Soundmax WDM, those are Windows Device Manager drivers, I believe, and then the SE folder and click OK and then next. And lo and behold, the driver is found. OK, finished. Okay, so we can see we're down to two yellow exclamation points. The first one's not going to go away because basically it's for a modem for which we do not have any Windows 98 drivers. 
Uh, as for the second one, I think I might have told a lie, and I think we are going to need to install that NUSB driver. So let's head on up to my computer here and go to the driver CD, USB folder, and install NUSB 36E. I'll click yes. That will install. Let's go ahead and restart. Starting up here, you can hear our nice audio, which we didn't have before. Isn't that nice? And now let's go ahead and go to my computer and click properties, device manager. Let's click on this guy here. Click reinstall driver, automatically search. Lo and behold, the driver is found. So with that, we're down to our final last yellow exclamation point, which I could get rid of if I were to pull the modem, but we're not going to do that today. So there you have it. Let's do one more thing and let's increase our resolution a little bit now that we have our video card drivers installed. Let's go to 800 by 600 pixels. There we go. So now we have a little bit more desktop real estate. So there you have it. Windows 98 set up on a Dell Dimension 2400. Uh, once again, lots of links below so that you can find the software if you want to perform this experiment yourself. I uh, hope that you enjoyed the video. Certainly appreciate you watching. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. More content to come. Uh, if you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do and give it a thumbs down. That helps us decide what sort of content we create in the future. Definitely click that notification bell as well so that you can be notified of future videos. Uh, thanks for watching. Glad to have you along and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.